Hey, welcome to another Jungleurium video, a video in which I will show you how we came from this to this, where you see we significantly improved the light solution in the enclosure and we rearranged and kind of improved the plants. Yeah, as I said multiple times in previous videos, the current light solution that we have in the jungleurium, it is not a permanent solution because this is not a real glow, grow light, it is just some random light that you can buy in any store. And even though it works, it is not an optimal solution for real plant growth. And inside of this enclosure, of course, these are just some temporal plants. You see they're all still in pots and I won't be even using all of these plants inside of Jungleurium. But today we will take those that we plan to use here and I will actually plant them. And also, as I said, I will take this plant from Elvira's enclosure. You see it is definitely overgrown and overtook the enclosure. I'm gonna take that plant out and we will also take the plant that we have in this enclosure. This is the old vampire crab enclosure. We are going to take uh, a bit of this plant and maybe this in the back. Yeah, so we are going to move that in the jungleurium. Hey, editing Petko here. Uh, I forgot to mention in the video that this Saturday I will be in Germany in Ham on Terroristica Expo and I will be selling enclosures over there and you can reserve your enclosure if you want to be sure that you will get to buy one because I'm not really sure how many I will be able to bring. You can send me an email or you can send me a message on Instagram and Facebook. So yeah, that's everything. Back to the video. Wow. So even though the plants that we will plant today are just a small fragment of all the plants that will go in the jungleurium, it is still super exciting to, to actually start planting it. And now once I fix the light here, I will be able to order all the plants that we need for this enclosure and that will probably be the next video or video after the next video, I don't know. Anyhow, for the light, let's look at this. I'm going to use an Arcadia Jungle Dawn light solution. You see LED bars, all of these are LED bars and it, this is the UVB because inside we will have some, some reptiles that need UVB and also I'll have frogs that will definitely benefit from the UVB. So that's why we have the UVB, but it, these are the grow lights that we are going to install today. And also huge shout out to Arcadia Reptile for sponsoring this, for providing me all of these things for free. You know, in the dark then I'm almost exclusively using Arcadia's products and not just because they are providing them to me. Even if I would need to buy them, I would still buy them because they offer for quality products and that is what I prefer yeah also they sent me this look at this you see these halogen lamps uh, I need them for for the scorpions because currently I'm using just the regular bulbs and I wanted to get my hands on these because they should be much better for the scorpions so in the future we can also expect a scorpion video scorpion update video where I will set up these lights and also we will do a bit of revamp here yeah i'm aware that i didn't do a scorpion video in quite a while so for all of you scorpion lovers you can expect that also in a few weeks uh and the other thing that we got we also got this deep heat projector and that is because as i said uh there will be some reptiles inside and you know reptiles like to bask and that's why i have this this flat rock over here the idea is to have um, to have a lamp above it so this is the warmest spot in the dark den and over here I expect that the reptiles will come to that heat and to bask here and also on this so I'll have it like pointing somewhere here so this will be the warm the warmest area but I don't think that we will do that in today's video because today we will focus on the lights and also on the plants depending on how quickly I will do that and first what I want to do I actually want to attempt I want to try to remove the doors I know that they can be moved but it is a job for two people and I'm not sure if I can do it alone I'm going to try it out though because it is going to make this job much easier but I'm not sure if that will go okay okay ah, great I can do it I totally forgot that I can use this thing. Now the second door should be much easier. Yeah, because I can hold it with two hands like this. Ah, and now you will finally be able to see inside without any reflection, because even if I open the door, there is still the door on the other side. So you could never actually see inside like fully. <laughs> 
check it out. Oh yes, it is so much better now. Great, great, great. So what is the plan? You see, I intentionally wanted to have a different sizes, different lengths of the bars. I could have in theory just ordered two of these lengths and then I could probably just fit two lengths on top and that would be it. But I actually have a grand plan that doesn't make sense any now, but will it will make sense in the future. So for now, just bear with me and trust me that I know what I'm doing. So I have two of these. These are the 15 watt fixtures. I also have one that is 22 watts, you see, right here. Then I have two of 34 watts. One, two. Uh, and that's basically it. This is the this is the UVB light. So we will put that aside for now. So what I can do, I can just link them together to make a uh, one long light, just like that. You see? So it is one long light, and now I can put it over there. Then I can just mount them on the ceiling, just like this lamp. But I have a better idea. You see, I 3D printed a bunch of these parts. And what these parts enables me, they enable me to mount the lights, uh, you see, like this, on the 45 degrees angle. And that will actually spread the light, in theory, that should spread the light in the enclosure more evenly and better, I think. So that is what we will do. That's why I 3D printed a bunch of these parts and <laughs> it is nothing special, it is just a 45 degrees thingy. But yeah, I can mount the mount for the light. You see, this is the mount where you mount the light. And I just put it like this and then click the light into that. And by the way, yeah, I got a messed up thumb. I was doing something and then got it hooked on the on the edge and ripped part of my nail, if you can see. And also I made a hole here. So yeah, it looks nasty, but it is nothing, nothing major. That is just a flesh wound. Also, I don't want to mount these parts into ceiling because I want to minimize the amount of holes that I will do in the ceiling, therefore minimizing the, the risk for humidity escaping into the ceiling. So therefore I want to minimize that and therefore I will mount it actually in the into this, you see, into this iron thing. Yeah, I will just drill it inside, but I don't want to make a million holes into that uh, metal beam. So therefore, I will just simply screw this wooden beam into that metal beam, and then we will screw the, all the mounts into the, into the wood. Yeah, it is, if it sounds confusing, it will be easy. It will, it, will all, it will all make sense in just a moment, trust me. I just hope that the beam is long enough and I need a meter just to make some measurements. Some lights will need to protrude outside like this and also like this because the beam is shorter than the, the entire length of the enclosure. Unfortunately, I don't have a longer 2x4 on my hand currently. This won't be good. I don't think so. You see the way you link two lights together is with this cable. But in order to make connection, you need to have a certain gap in between. And I don't think that I have enough gap if I do it like, hmm, I need to calculate some. Some more calculations are needed. You see, this is the idea. Now the light is at the angle and the only question is if they all fit here. Oh yeah, look at the system. It, I know that it is not pretty, but it works and you won't be able to see this anyway because it will be behind this black thing. So it doesn't really matter. And if you're thinking that this wood will actually rot because it is not treated, yeah, that is the truth, but it will take a couple of years for that. And in the meantime, I'm going to do this thing a bit differently. You will see that in the future. As I said, trust me. <laughs> now I just need to add these side mounts and then we can mount it inside. Ta-da! And the whole contraption is done. I didn't mount these uh, last fixtures because I want to have this area free so I can uh, drill it in into this metal thing. But before I actually do that, I want to test it out to see if everything works, if all connections are alright. So let's actually do that. Okay, and let's click. <laughs> Damn, that is bright. Look at me. Am I bright enough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't look at it. It's so bright. Let's switch it off. But good thing that it works. Of course, first we need to remove the old light. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I need to move the old mount. 
and I'm going to cover them with silicone because as I said I don't want to risk um, humidity going into the ceiling that is a big no-no nothing a bit of black silicone can fix this is so impractical to do alone <laughs> the hole is of course at the wrong spot oh why am i not surprised everything moved a bit Let's see if i can figure something out heck yeah i just drilled another hole more on the left and on top so now it is not straight there is a gap here but it doesn't matter because it is in place let's install the other two bars and then connect everything but before we connect the new light we of course need to turn off the old light because i don't want to get electrocuted here on the video <laughs> of course right <laughs> okay i think that we are ready are you ready i certainly am so let's do this let me turn off the light for the first time <gasps> oh. whoa that is bright man oh man i don't know if you remember how this looked but it is now way 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 brighter holy holy moly we are definitely ready for the plants but first we need to clean this up with one quick magic of course now i can take all the plants out and by the way i don't know if you know this but you see this this wood it it actually fell down so we need to put it back at its spot i have no idea when it actually happened i just came here and spotted that it fell down Oop. Oh, I love this plant. Look how, how all the roots are spreading, you see? <laughs> Burp. This. Then we have a plant here that actually rooted through the, you see? <laughs> I will need to cut this pot. The plant adapted for sure. This and this that I... Oh, there is a lot of roots inside. Great, great, great. This plant is actually cut from this enclosure you see this plant in the back i just cut it and put it in the water and now the roots the roots develop like magic <laughs> and this i was thinking a lot if i really want to put this plant inside of this enclosure or not and even though it is a bit too big i think that i will i think that i will put it inside because originally i bought it for this enclosure and then later i figured out that it is actually a bit too big but it doesn't matter now let me see what actually happened here yeah it probably Ooh, this is also falling down hmm. if you watch the video where i set everything up you know that some things majority of rocks are glued to the back with uh, glue for tiles but majority of wood is just stuck in the ground so what is now happening at least what i think that it's happening since the waterfall is splashing a lot uh, this area is getting super wet you see the the dirt is actually super wet and now this dirt is no longer holding the wood properly so that is kind of problematic and i didn't really thought about it hopefully we will be able to fix it because you know in the regular enclosures the dirt becomes as hard as rock and that is also the case here on this side it is not as hard as rock because of the misting and all the humidity but it is still strong enough to hold the stuff but here the water is definitely making this a bit more difficult still this is just a minor setback i can deal with everything now you can see how I fixed it. You see, I lean this wood on this rock so therefore it won't fall anymore. I mean, it will have some sort of support over there and this is now standing almost upright so it is also balancing a bit and it is not heavily leaning on any side. Great, great, great. You see, these are already fixed. I had this upstairs and I just decided to put it here to see if they will perform better in this enclosure. And also I took this from the other enclosure while these, you know these, these are from the Minax enclosure. I just dropped them over there and now they are slowly spreading. Also check it out. Mushrooms, mushrooms over there and mushrooms over there. This is the mushroom area and also mushroom over there. <laughs> I love mushrooms. Yeah, so these are the, the plants that are already fixed and these are the plants that I will put inside. So I removed the other that I don't plan to move. Now what I want, what I need to do with them, I need to clear their roots and also I want to wash this because 
I think that there are some stuff on the leaves. I'm not sure, but I want to watch that. Let me just start and big important information. I am not a plant person. So therefore take everything you see here with a grain of salt and make sure to double check all the, all the things you see here before you start to replicate any of that. I'm going to try to plant these plants in the best way I think it is for them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I am doing it correctly. I can be totally wrong. <laughs> Man, this is a lovely plant, right? She's really enjoying her time in the enclosure. I just hope that now the light won't be too strong. In case that happens, in case the light will be too strong, the LED lights can easily be dimmable. So I can just tone down the light a bit. Everything will need to be fine tuned in there. Since this plant seems to love humidity, I think that I will plant it somewhere here, like right there. There is more moisture in here, so I think it will like it. And this plant, I will just plant it right here. I never had actual luck with this type of plant in any of my enclosure. Actually, I planted it a bunch of times in dark frog enclosure, and I think there was not enough, li enough light for it. But yeah, we will see how it will perform here. For this plant, I want to dig a hole here. And I want to actually plant it in the dirt in the back. That is the beauty of this type of background. You can always dig a hole in it without any problem. And now I just push it in here, just like that. And even though it's currently standing weirdly, it will up itself right with some time, within a few days. I will put this one up here. Also, I will need to dig a hole. Mm -hmm. This one seems to love humidity. So I will just cover its root here with sphagnum moss, this moist sphagnum moss, and position it somewhere here. So hopefully it will just go like here, 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 here. At least that's the idea. The other one will go somewhere here with roots going here in this moist soil, you see. Now to deal with this monster. I need to be careful not to damage the roots because the plant seems really flimsy. I don't know how to describe it. So I will make a hole here. Then we will throw dirt from here. A bit of fresh potting soil. And now in that soil we can plant this. And now mix it with this and this. There. With these planted plants it is starting to look better and better. Now to take that plant and the other plant. I just hope that Elvira won't come out to investigate what is happening. It seems I will need to pull the whole cord bark out. Oh <laughs> yeah, the roots are everywhere. The plant really let her roots go to town. <laughs> Look at this. I need to break the cord bark in order to get the plant out. That is really the only way, you see. Thank God I didn't attempt to pull it out. Ah, I had to change the battery and I thought that I pressed record, but I didn't. In the meantime, I planted it here because of the humidity. And I think that this plant loves humidity. So we will see about that. But it's kind of bent weirdly now because it was so tall in that enclosure. And now it needs to get a bit better posture, hopefully in the next few days. Now we are left with only plants from this enclosure. Yeah, these are really really nice you see first plant is this and the second plant is this in the back i think that it definitely lacks light in here so i will try to pull it from the back hopefully it is not rooted too too good okay it goes this was definitely easier than i thought you see this is the plant and it currently looks really bad but trust me it can be awesome now i will do the same thing with this one pull it from the back Great. Ta-da, here it is. Hopefully these plants won't get, won't get shocked from all the light now. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, I can just place them on the back just like I did with this plant. You see, I just place it here and now it is spreading. So I think that the same thing should be with this plant. I just place it on the background and it will just root itself on it. At least in theory. <laughs> it already looks so nice and natural over there. Also, I have one for this side, although I'm not sure if it is too small for, for it to root itself. And also this one will just stay in the substrate. Now this plant, it looks terrible. It definitely looks terrible and I'm not sure if it will be able to recover, but I will place it here on this super moist background and hope for the best. I will do the same thing, just press it in the soil. Hopefully that should be enough. And these are actually the last plants. I decided to take these two bromeliads from also from that enclosure and I'll just super glue them to 
I think this branch, yeah, we'll see. First you get a bit of super glue on the surface, like that. And then you just press the bromeliad into the super glue until it cures. <laughs> there it is. The bromeliads have these small roots that they use to hold on to stuff, but they don't need roots to live. They get all the food they need from the light. Well, this bromeliad actually wanted somewhere here. And I don't think that I even need the super glue. You see it is holding on its own, but I will add just a little bit to make sure it doesn't randomly fall down. And there we go. Everything that I wanted to do today is done. The plants are in, the light is in. We didn't do the heat spot and the UVB, but that is not currently important. Also later what I will do, I will take a bit of potting soil and place it under these cork barks. So in case some isopods really prefer that, they will also have that option. You know, I definitely want to provide as much options for animals inside as possible. But now ooh, I'm so dark now because the background is so bright. I need to turn like like this. Yeah, eh, okay, now we are fine. Uh, yeah, I will go and order the plants now. And hopefully once they arrive, we will plant everything inside of this enclosure. And then, then it'll be crazy. Uh, I forgot to say that, I forgot to mention at the start of the video, this weekend I'm in Germany, more specifically uh, I'm at the expo in Ham. Uh, it is called Terroristica, so there will be a link in the description so you can check it out. If you need some enclosures or some other stuff, see you there. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you read this channel, make sure to subscribe up every Monday and sometimes uh, live stream on Sunday. So see you again soon. Bye!